Hi there, welcome to another session of Hacker Rank Solutions. This one is number 41. It's an easy one. And it's a very interesting one because I will teach you a lot of different tools in Python for solving this problem. So stay tuned for this one. And if you like this video, and if you like my videos, leave me a comment, ask me your questions, subscribe to my channel. It really helps me grow my channel. Let's hit the rope. Okay, for me to be able to explain this problem to you, I've got a Jupyter Lab on the right hand side of my screen. I've got the Hacker Rank on the left side. And this one is called Ordered Dictionary. If you haven't seen my video on dictionaries, the link is up the top right. But let me explain to you what we need to do. For this task, we have been asked to use Ordered Dict, which is a module in the collections library. What it does, it keeps the order of how the data was added. In an ordinary dictionary, which I'll show you an example very quickly, the order is not saved. For example, if you have five people and you are registering their names and telephone numbers, you've got Adam with a telephone number, you've got Alex with a telephone number, you've got Jim with a telephone number. The way you record them, the order is not saved in a normal dictionary. But in an ordered dictionary, the way you save Adam and Alex and Jim, it is saved. So the order is saved. It's a very handy thing for you to be able to understand the chronological order of data being received. But let me quickly show you based on the example from HackerRank. But before I start, remember that order dictionary does not come with default Python. You need to import it from the collections library. So from collections, import order dict. So that's for now, just leave it there. I will show you a normal dictionary, then I will show you order dictionary. I just had that one there for me not to forget. Now. Let's just make an ordinary dictionary. Ordinary. We just show it with curly brackets. Once you make it, you just say ordinary, ordinary dict, for example, a equals one. Let me just copy that line to save us some time. Another one, make this one C and make that one three. I think that should be okay. And if I print ordinary dictionary, you will see that it is a1, B2, and C3. For now, it looks ordered, but it does not have to be ordered necessarily. But then you might ask, okay, how is ordered dictionary different? Well, it's very much the same. So I'm just gonna copy exactly the same thing, paste it down, but let me make the necessary changes. I'm not gonna make a normal dictionary. I'm just gonna make an ordered dictionary, open and close parentheses. And I'm not going to call it ordinary. I'm going to call it ordered dictionary. Copy that, paste it here, paste it here, paste it here, because I want to make a new dictionary and also paste it here. When I run that, you will see that the ordered dictionary, the way we print it actually looks different to the ordinary dictionary. So this is how an ordered dictionary works. But let's see what HackerRank wants us to do for it. The task is you are the manager of a supermarket. You have a list of N items together with their prices. So we've got the items and their prices. Remember that items are the keys, prices are the values. But on a particular day, your task is to print each item name. So we will have item name, price, item name, price, and net price in order of its first occurrence. So when it says first occurrence, time is important. And that means that we need to use order dictionaries. But remember net price, is the number of items sold multiplied by the price. For example, if a customer buys a yogurt, a pack of chips, another yogurt, another yogurt. So we need to say yogurt times three because if each bucket of yogurt is $5, they bought three and we need to show 15 because three times five is 15. The input format is quite important. The first line contains the number of items N. So let's get the number of items from the user. I will just scroll down here. So n number of items n equals int of the user input. If you haven't seen my video on the input function, the link is up the top right. We will receive the input from the user. Okay. And if I print n, you will see that when I run that, for example, the user has about five stuff, you will see that we've got five items. So that's my first bit of code, I will receive the number of items. And then I will make an order dictionary based on the number of items they bought, their names and their prices. The next end lines contains the items name and price. For example, here's an example. The customer has bought nine items. So that's n equals nine. Then banana fries, 12, potato chips, 30, apple juice, 10, candy, five, apple juice, 10. You can see that apple juice is repeated twice. 
candy is repeated four times. So I need to say four times $5 for the candy and then potato chips again, 30. And the output is quite important. So we had one banana fries in the list. So that's $12 for banana fries. We had potato chips twice, two times $30 is 60, apple juice 20 and candy 20. And you can see that it has been printed based on the order they came in the list. So banana fries came first, potato chips came next, apple juice came third, and candy came fourth. So I need to use an order dictionary. So now, if I look at the input format again, once I receive the number of items, I will have to repeat some operations nine times. So let me write a for loop for i in range of n, because I know that there are nine things and I will do it nine times. So that do something. Now I will tell you what we will do. Step number one, receive the user input. So that's num do something will be number one, receive the item. How do I receive the item? With the input function. So item equals the input, the input from the user. And I will just strip that from any spaces before and after just to make sure that the input is clean in case the user presses their space just wrong at the end or at the beginning. We will need to split the input from the user into the name of the item and the price of the item. Let me give you an example. When the user says banana and space, for example, $2, if I split that by a space, it will give me banana and two, which is good. I, that's what I want. But let's see if it says, if the user says banana fries, if I split that by space, it will say banana fries and two. That's not what I really want. I want banana fries and I want two separately. So what I can do, I can use R split, which is string split. And it is different in a way that you can say, hey, I don't want you to break every piece I want you to break as many pieces as I am telling you. For example, if I say, I want you to split based on space, you will see that it will say, okay, if I see any space, I will break it. Then the good thing is I can say, hey, I don't want you to split more than one time. What it will do, it will only break it one time and it will keep the rightmost and then split the rest. So. It will keep two and then break the rest, which is banana fries all together. This is very, very useful because if the word was, if the item was banana fries red, as an example, it would still give me banana fries red as one piece and the price, which is two as one piece. So this is very, very handy. What I will do, I will just copy this and add it here. If it doesn't make sense, leave a comment for me and ask me. Okay, before I move on, remember this. The funny thing is the output from this action is the price and the item name. So why not I add the price here? Because the output of this thing are two things. Banana fries red, which goes into the item, and two here that goes into the price. It will give me the price and the name of the item. So let me get rid of this. Now I've got the item and the price. One more thing I have to do is to convert the price into an integer because it was in a string format. So this is good. I will have the price and the item name. Now, before I can go ahead, remember, I will get the user's inputs, just break them apart, make them really nice and clean, but I need to put them into an order dictionary. I don't have an order dictionary. Let me make one quickly. So I will go ahead and say item dictionary, ordered equals ordered dictionary. Great news, I have an ordered dictionary which is ready for me to use. In step number two, check if the item exists in the dictionary. If not, add it. All right, now I will check if I have already taken the customer's banana fries, chips and stuff. If not, I will add it to my ordered dictionary. So then I have to check if item in ordered. If the item is already there, all I need to do is just add one more to it. Then item dict ordered for this item, 
equals add the price once again to it. If it doesn't, if it doesn't already exist, I want you to add that to your ordered dictionary. Great, now that I've got an order dict, I just need to print it. All I need to do is to write another for loop for item and price of each item. Item dict ordered, take all the items. I want you to print the item and its price. Banana fries, 12. I will copy not to make any problems. Potato chips, 30. Apple juice, 10. If I make any dictation mistakes, it will identify it as a new item. Candy five, another candy five, another candy five, and lastly, potato chips, 30. So I've got banana fries, 12, potato chips, 60, and apple juice, 20, and candy, 20. And that's exactly what Hacker Rank is expecting me to do. So what I will do, I'll copy the code. Let me just go back up. Do not forget that you need to import the dictionary, the ordered dictionary, then you need to receive the number of items from the user. You don't need to print it because then otherwise uh, HackerRank is not going to be happy. And then you copy the code and paste it here. Let's run the code and if, see if it runs. But if you have any questions, leave it in the comments area and ask me, why does this not make any sense? Run that code. Yeah, it says, congratulations. The first test case was successful. Let's submit it and see if all the test cases are successful. Yes, they are. Thank you for watching this video. As I said, subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, and leave me a comment if you like these videos. It really helps me grow my audience. Thank you.